We're on the ramp at Sacramento Executive Airport to have a look at how a departure from a small towered airport in Class D airspace will work. We'll be flying VFR from Sacramento to Stockton, a short flight to the southeast. We've just climbed into the airplane, completed our engine start checklist, and have our avionics and radios powered up. The very first thing we'll do is listen to the latest ATIS. We'll find the ATIS frequency on our taxiway diagram, which we should be referring to throughout our departure here. It's 125.5, so we'll put that on our COM2 and hit the swap button to make it active. We'll hit COM2 on our audio panel so we can receive the broadcast. We pick up the broadcast midway through, so we'll want to wait for it to recycle to listen to the whole thing. Grab a pen and paper or scratch pad on your tablet as we'll want to write this down. Sacramento Executive Airport, HS Information Uniform, 1653 Zulu. Wind calm, visibility 10, sky condition clear, temperature 9 or 2.6, altimeter 3032, arriving and departing runways 2030, visual approaches and use read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information uniform. So we'll turn off COM2 on the panel. The altimeter setting was reported at 3032, so let's set that up. We'll make sure that matches the field elevation of 24 feet, indicated on the taxiway diagram. Now we need our taxi instructions. We get that from ground control. We'll set that frequency into COM1, 125.0, and flip it active. Some pilots like to have ground on COM2, and that's fine also. After we get our ground instructions, the next controller we'll need to talk to is tower, so let's put that on standby. 119.5. We'll also eventually want the ATIS for our destination at Stockton. That's 118.25. So let's set that in COM2 standby. Let's think about what we want to say to the ground controller. First of all, let's think of which runway we'll use. The ATIS said runways 20 and 30 are active with winds calm right now, so there's no reason we wouldn't get either of those runways assigned. Runway 20 is the longer runway. Any larger traffic arriving and departing would probably get this runway assigned. So although we could use runway 30 in our Cessna, this would be an intersecting runway. And in any case, it's a further taxi for us from where we are, the FBO at Executive Jet Center. So let's expect runway 20. From here, we would expect to be told to taxi out from the ramp, to the long parallel taxiway, Mike, take a left, cross runway 12, which we would need explicit instructions to do, and then turn right on Delta to the hold short for runway 20. With that as the expectation, let's think about our first call to ground. The old format will apply. Who are we talking to? Who are we? Where are we? What do we want? We're talking to executive ground. We're Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. We're at Executive Jet Center, and we want to, well, what do we want? Obviously, we want to take off, and we want taxi instructions to the runway to do so, which we think is runway 20, but we're not going to assume it's 20 and tell the ground controller that's where we want to go. They'll assign a runway to us, and they need to know a few things about us first. Our full call sign tells them we're a Cessna with the speed and climb performance associated with that. So they know, for example, putting an airliner behind us for takeoff will mean they'll have to hold them for a significant amount of time while we fly away. The controller will also want to know that we're VFR, so there's no IFR flight plan associated. They'll also want to know where we're going. Depending on our on-course heading on departure, we may get a different runway assignment or order amongst other departing aircraft. There's a lot going on behind the scenes with ground control as they slot aircraft for departure, especially if the airport's busy. Finally, they want to know we have the current ATIS information. So what we want then is to taxi for a VFR departure to the southeast with information uniform. Here's what the call is like. Executive ground, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango is at Executive Jet Center. Request taxi for VFR departure to the southeast with information uniform. 
Number 518 Foxtrot Tango Exec Ground. Thank you. Runway 20 taxi via Mike Delta. Cross runway 12 on Mike. And we'll read that back. Pay special attention in the read back to runway assignments and hold short instructions as those are required to be read back. Runway 20 via Mike Delta. Cross runway 12 on Mike. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. Notice we aren't told to make left or right turns. Based on our destination, runway 20, we should know the correct turn for each taxiway. Also, we're told to cross runway 12. If we were not given this instruction, we would need to hold short of the runway until instructed to cross. We'll taxi out of the hangars towards taxiway Mike. We might see a taxiway sign with yellow background and the letter M in black indicating the intersection of Mike. We'll turn left here as we parallel our runway 20. Next, we get to the intersection of a defunct runway. We'll have a look both ways before crossing just in case. We don't need any instruction to cross a closed runway. We get to the intersection with runway 12. We'll have a look both ways and cross as we've been instructed to. Finally, we get to taxiway delta. We turn right here, which takes us to the hold short line for our departing runway 20. If it's busy, we could pull off to the side and do our pre takeoff routine. Once we reach the hold short line, we can switch over to the tower frequency. The ground controller won't typically tell us to contact tower. Now would be a great time to put another frequency we'll need later on the standby, the tower at Stockton, 120.3. We'll have gone through our pre-takeoff checklist, and now we need to think about our departure. We've plugged our course into the GPS, telling us that a desired track to Stockton is 149 degrees. We'll be taking off from runway 20, so a left turn on departure will put us on course. We could have done this with a nav log and chart to determine the on-course heading too. We'll also plan to climb initially to 3,000 feet. This is another component we'd have planned out prior to getting into the airplane. Now, the call to tower. Who are we talking to? Who are we? Where are we? What do we want? We're talking to Executive Tower. We're Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. We're at the hold short line for runway 20. We want to depart to the southeast. Executive Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, holding short runway 20, ready for VFR departure to the southeast. There's no need to give the tower the ATIS information, and notice we said departure, not takeoff, to avoid confusion. Number 518 Foxtrot Tango, exact tower, southeast departure is approved, runway 20, cleared for takeoff. Southeast departure approved, runway 20, cleared for takeoff. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango. Now we say takeoff as we've been cleared for that. Also, the southeast departure approved means we can make our planned left turn on climb out. So we'll take off. About 500 AGL, we'll make our left turn on course to Stockton. We'll level off at 3,000 feet, at which point we'll have left the four mile delta ring around the airport, and we can let tower know. Executive Tower, Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, has departed your airspace to the southeast. Tower might tell us we could change frequencies, or they might say nothing. But now that we're out of the delta, we can switch off the tower frequency and continue on our way. 